G'day folks, we're at, the, at our uh, off-grid property for a couple of days, we've got a, an exchange uh, high school student um, being sponsored by one of my daughters and the um, exchange student, her name's Honika, uh, comes from Osaka in Japan. Anyway, she wanted to come out here and experience a couple of days in the bush and uh, she seems to be quite, uh, quite enjoying herself quite well. So um, I was just uh, cutting up some firewood this morning and uh, this is the Australian iron bark. You can tell by the type of bark there. It's one of our hardwoods and uh, they do grow very tall and they do take a long time to grow. Uh, this particular tree was uh, come off another property nearby uh, who was doing some uh, bushfire um, what do you call it uh, clearing some land for uh, to reduce uh, bushfire hazards and so on and un unfortunately uh, it's, it's sometimes you know you, you take down trees too so you know it, it depends on the circumstances proximity of trees and that sort of stuff I'm not going to go too much into that but anyway um, when I was cutting this this morning uh, in this, this particular one um, as most viewers probably know you get growth rings in the hardwood parts of, of a tree you know, you know, whether it's iron bark or some other sort of tree here in Australia or overseas you always see growth rings and the one thing about growth rings is that it gives you a good idea of the seasons uh, past as this tree has grown to um, where it is now and it gives you a, a good idea of well around here um, uh, drought conditions or uh, very good seasons with um, uh, rain for these uh, trees to grow I did a rough count on uh, this this stump this morning after cut up with a chainsaw. It's only a very rough count, and um, each growth ring represents roughly one year, um, somewhere thereabouts. And some of the growth rings are very um, thin, and some are very wide. Now the thinner ones usually indicate, and uh, we'll see if we can pick up one here in the camera. Uh, there's one just there on the tip of that there. You can see it's a dark one. It's a very, very um, thin growth ring. And there's another one on the inside of it. It's a bit hard to see out because uh, the way it's, it's cut and that sort of thing, if you sand it down and, and that sort of thing and uh, clean it up a bit, you get a better idea. So that indicates. Um, and you can see the growth rings in, in here closer. Some of them are, are very narrow and some of them are wider. And um, this is a very good example here uh, with the tip of the knife is. Uh, that's possibly one or two, I think it's one growth ring. And uh, it's, it's quite wide, quite thick. So that sort of indicates a, a very good season or two for this particular tree. So... Um, in that respect, it gives you an idea of the, the seasonal conditions going back right to the, the very early stages when um, this tree started off as a sapling, and this is roughly uh, the sapling stage here. And as I said, each growth ring represents roughly one year of growth. So that gives you a very good idea, and um, it, it's, a, it's a, an organic record of seasonal conditions over a very long time. And uh, as I said, I did a rough count on the number of rings on this, just in its raw state here, and I got out to about 90 or 100. So you're looking at this, the age of this tree, uh, around about that age, 90, 90 years or so, maybe a little bit more. But um, also, if you're into uh, um, making renewable char in the bush, what I've done in the past is that um, we break off branches, we'll find dead fall on the ground, fresh dead fall on the ground. You quite often get this soft layer under here. I think it's called a cambium layer. If it's 
it's new rep it's new growth and uh, what you do is you, you can strip the bark off and just cut this away put it in a um, tin with a lid on it uh, the way people make normal uh, cloth char cotton char and uh, just put it on a fire and it chars up very well and it does take a spark very well off a off a um, fire steel or something like that I have used it and it works very well so uh, that's uh, another means of renewable char in the bush if you're out there for quite a while there's there's lots of other stuff you can use too find laying around on the ground um, you don't have to cut anything down or bust anything up to do it just a matter of finding what uh, what works best and what doesn't so uh, yeah that's that's the bark of the iron bark tree good heavy wood it's a hardwood and for uh, furniture yeah it's great stuff it really is it's um i have seen a lot of uh, outdoor furniture and indoor furniture made with this stuff and uh it stains and polishes very well although it's very heavy um but it, it makes great uh, great uh, furniture and, and things like that and um i've seen people uh use the uh, timber off these for axe handles and things like that so uh, that's our uh, Australian iron bark okay folks thanks for watching see you later